Hi, I'm Mitch Mitchell. Even though this is coming out on Wednesday, I actually did this Monday morning uh, before I went to a doctor's appointment so that I could keep some of the things from the Super Bowl fresh in my mind. Because that's what we're going to talk about today. Some takeaways that I had from the game. Not just the actual game, but the entire Super Bowl 50 experience. And I thought, how interesting is that? I've actually been alive for all 50 Super Bowls, which is really scary. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, that's just how that is. So the first one was looking at some of the players who came out being recognized for being uh, MVPs of Super Bowls. Did you notice how many of those guys were walking really uh, gingerly, uh, the pains and everything. I mean, when Elway came out, I was really stunned that he was moving so badly. And the same with Troy Aikman. And it does kind of show us the kind of pain and uh, injuries that these guys go through to play this game. And of course, these days, we all know about the CTE thing with the brain. So that's just kind of freaky. Uh, but it was nice seeing all those guys. And yes, it was classless for Tom Brady to be booed like that. That just showed a total lack of class. Come on, the guy wasn't even in the game. The guy's won three Super Bowls. Really? I don't know. So I thought that was tacky. The second thing was these two teams played some monster defense. You know, you could throw out the score. I mean, the score makes it look like Denver dominated offensively. That ain't even the truth. Cam Newton actually outplayed Peyton Manning, but he got... Two fumbles, he fumbled twice, and both of them led to scores. And that's really the big difference in the game. Both teams were outstanding defensively. I can't remember seeing a game like this. Obviously, there were some of those early football games, you know, when the Jets beat the Colts 16-7 to in Super Bowl three. That was obviously a big defensive thing. But you haven't seen anything like that in so many years. I mean, we've gotten used to some really big scores. So that shows you that defense actually does win Super Bowls. Offense may win you a whole lot of games during the season, but defense wins Super Bowls. And I had actually had Carolina, <laughs> so I end up now losing a bet, and I have to pay my friend and his wife pizzas. You know, okay, we're cheap betters. Um, so there was that. There was the halftime show where I didn't even know who Coldplay was. You know, old guy, okay? Now, I knew a little bit of the one song that they did. No, not the words, but the lyrics were for a TV show called Undercover Boss that I used to watch some years ago for at least a short period of time. And I recognized that, but I didn't know anything else. I didn't know they were British. I didn't, you know, all the swirly stuff and whatever. And I have to admit that I was thrown off by how badly the musicians lip-synced or fake played. The drummer was nowhere close to the beat. I mean, I, I don't think he knew, really knew what to do. It was still kind of cool seeing Beyonce, and it was cool seeing Bruno Mars. I think he was a late addition, and I'm glad they did Uptown Funk. I had a feeling they weren't going to do Uptown Funk because leading into it, they were playing a lead-in of my favorite song ever, which is I Want You Back by the Jackson 5. I said, oh, heck, if they're playing that, that means I'm not going to hear Bruno do Uptown Funk. And sure enough, Bruno did Uptown Funk, and then Beyonce did a little bit of Uptown Funk. That was kind of cool. So I enjoyed the halftime show. Uh, Coldplay? I may go and try to listen to a couple other things because they weren't so bad, even though I didn't know who they were to begin with. So that's that one. Now, let's talk about the commercials. <laughs> the one I absolutely hated, I hated it, was Puppy Monkey Baby. I hated it. I, it was the most talked about thing on Twitter because I was kind of on Twitter at the same time during the game. And the overwhelming majority absolutely hated it. And I bet it ends up being a big one for Mountain Dew because when someone really hates something and they're talking about it, you know, talking about it, whether it's good or bad, is good publicity. I don't even know what they were actually promoting except it was Mountain Dew. And I didn't remember that initially until I was reading and someone mentioned it. So I didn't like that one. I hated that one. I wasn't crazy about the Doritos one where the guy, the wife is there, you know, getting close to having the baby. And there's the guy in the birthing room with Doritos. And the baby comes chasing the Doritos. Yeah, I know some people thought that one was kind of funny. Some people really loved it. Eh, I was a little creeped. I'll tell you the truth. I was creeped out by it. I loved the one with the sheep. 
singing somebody to love from Queen. Come on. Come on. Singing Sheep. That was wonderful. I love that. I loved how, you know, when the guy was coming and then you hear the guy playing the same song. And then you had the dog doing the commentary for the truck. I said, oh, that's a nice touch. I really thoroughly like that. Um, the other commercials, there were tons of car commercials. And this is interesting to me because I'm remembering back in 2009, 2010, when it looked like most of the car companies were going away. And actually, it started with President Bush. I'm going to give him credit for this one. He started with the idea of bailing out, you know, some of these industries and President Obama followed up with it. And look what we got now. We've got these car companies that have totally recovered and we're seeing all these wonderful cars. I mean, that one car... I thought it looked a lot like a Transformer. That's just my thought. I can't tell you what it is because I don't know what it is. I don't even know whether it was an Acura or an Audi. Or, I have no clue. I just know there were a lot of the car commercials, and I thought those were all kind of cool. So, you know, I'm glad to see the car industry back. And I'll admit, there were a couple of commercials. I still have no idea what they were. I don't have a recollection of them anymore right now. And that's probably one of my one gripes about some commercials is that they're on and then they're gone. It's like, what was the product? And if you don't remember what the product was, then it's a bad commercial. It just is. So those are kind of my takeaways from the Super Bowl. I enjoyed, you know, watching it. I'm glad that Peyton Manning won, even though I wanted Cam's team to win. I hope the guy just goes ahead and retires because you don't need all those injuries, dude. Just, you know, walk away now. Maybe you'll be fine. Elway, you know, don't turn into Elway. Don't be a hero. You know, uh, you go out on top. You know, a lot of you don't know that I, I used to play piano and I used to sing at weddings. And I went out on top when the very last song I played at this wedding, and I did four songs at a wedding, I got a standing ovation. And my wife was sitting there in the front row, and I said, you know what, I will never play piano again. And I did, and that was 1999. And I still feel good about that. So, Peyton, take your championship and walk away. Now, y'all may disagree with me. You may agree with me. Let me know your thoughts down below. And if you have any commentary on some of these stupid commercials or some of the good ones, let me know. Hope you enjoyed this. I will talk to you later. Mitch Mitchell, y'all take care.